Ah, Europe. It has contributed so much to world culture. Germanic music, British humor, the French work ethic. There is one European export, however, that has made more of an impact than any other, and that's violence. Europeans have killed people for land, they've killed people for religion, and they've even killed people for ideas. Europeans were so dedicated to killing each other that they found new ways of organizing their societies and their economies to better serve that effort. These innovations allowed them to conquer the world. For 500 years, the outrages accumulated, and the body counts continued to rise. The weapons used became more and more extreme. Each war was crueler than the last. Every populated landmass felt the effects of European domination. The European beast was savage to itself, and it was savage to everybody else. And then, halfway through the last century, it stopped. You see, the thing was, Europe was so good at fighting wars that it couldn't do it all the time. They needed to take breaks. They came up with elaborate ways to avoid fighting wars. In Europe, it wasn't as simple as one empire making a treaty with another empire. There were always at least five separate major powers whose concerns had to be taken into account. From the Treaty of Westphalia down to the United Nations, these systems and organizations would work, but only for a period of time. All of them would eventually fall to pieces or just lose effectiveness. Finally, after World War II, they came up with something that has lasted down to this day. Visionary European politicians like Jean Monnet and Robert Schuman had a plan. The idea was to tie European countries together so tightly that a new war would be economically impossible. They put together the European Coal and Steel Community, which eventually became the European Union. For the past 65 years, no major European power has fought another. There has certainly been fighting, but that has been on the borders of the European Union, rather than within the EU itself. Even including the wars in Yugoslavia and the one that may be developing right now in the Ukraine, less than one million Europeans have died since 1951. In the first part of the 20th century, over 60 million Europeans died. European wars also killed tens of millions of non-Europeans, including half a million Americans. For now, this seems to be over. The European beast has been tamed. Does this mean the European Union is flawless? Hell no, it's a complete mess. They have no appropriate sense of the division of powers between Brussels and the individual countries. They have a lot of work to do, but they're muddling through. And this process may be able to redeem Europe in a different way. The difficulty of the task that Europe has set itself, the effort to try to get 28 different countries to live in peace across language barriers and different levels of economic development is very similar to the task that we all face in the 21st century. Europe's successes and failures now will teach us how to better organize the world in the coming decades. Europe's greatest legacy does not have to be violence. That legacy could be a lasting peace. Uh, please subscribe. Thanks for listening.